Strong, good morning, El Paso. 25 years ago this day, seven people killed in one of the largest unsolved shootings in history. Las Cruces police now hoping someone will come forward about the Bowling Alley Massacre. It's only going to get worse before it gets better. We have the latest on a major construction project in Las Cruces that will affect drivers and businesses. Plus, it's scary, it's like slow motion, watching the whole thing come down. It's really slow. The latest snowstorm to slam the Northeast is breaking records today. There is so much snow, some places are considering dumping it into the ocean. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley and Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7's Good Morning El Paso. A very good morning, El Paso, Las Cruces, and Juarez. I'm Stephanie Valle. And I'm Hillary Florin. Good morning, everyone. Right now it is 6.01 on your Tuesday morning, and Crystal Cly is not here in the studio today. She's out live at the National Weather Service. Yes, yeah, she's celebrating Weather Day. Happy Weather Day, Crystal. Yeah, hi guys. We kind of termed it Weather Day because I get to come out here and just sort of nerd out, talk about science with all these meteorologists back here at the National Weather Service. And I've been having a good time. I've got to tell you, I've been talking about some stuff that are kind of the backside of forecasting. What I do before we go on air, stuff that maybe viewers wonder about but never get to see. And we're going to continue doing that this next hour, including talking about computer models, looking at some different maps and charts, and we're going to mix in a few more of those weather instruments. Right now, we're going to talk about your forecast current conditions outside. Let's look at our maps. First off, your temperature here in El Paso. We're at 47 right now. It feels like 45 degrees with those winds at 5 miles per hour and our relative, relative rather humidity at 49%. In Las Cruces, we're sitting at 41 degrees. Winds not a factor and humidity at 66% outside in Las Cruces reporting. Clear skies out there. Clouds and radar showing us this. We're not tracking much of anything going on currently with clouds and radar, but that's expected to change as we are looking at that long-term forecast Wednesday into Thursday and then even on your weekend, some chances of rain finally building back in. For now, though, we're going to leave you with just that because I am going to go check out, you see some of these maps in the background, some of the stuff that I don't usually get to actually play with. So we're going to go check that out. I'll be talking more with John Fawcett, and we will be back in just a few minutes. Hillary and Stephanie. All right. Thanks so much, Crystal. We'll check in with you in a bit. Millions in the Northeast are waking up for yet another face-off with winter. That's right. Talking more weather, Massachusetts is in a state of emergency right now, and New Englanders are running out of places to actually put all the snow that's already fallen. ABC's Elizabeth Herr has our storm track weather coverage. Traffic troubles overnight. Cars backed up for miles with a stretch of the New Jersey Turnpike shut down for hours. These images from drivers stuck in traffic, some wondering if a flash freeze was to blame. This morning, troopers are investigating, so far confirming at least one person was killed and more than 15 cars, buses and tractor trailers were involved. Drivers throughout the area spent the day navigating roads and highways covered in snow, sleet and ice. Very, very poor condition. Yeah, we've seen a couple of accidents on the highway. In Rockland, Massachusetts, a close call. The steady snowfall causing this building to cave in. Scary. It's like slow motion, watching the whole thing come down. It was really slow. While in Boston, snowblowers are struggling to stay ahead of Mother Nature. Nearly two feet of snow on Monday, bringing the total to a historic 74 inches of snow so far this season. That's more than D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, and New York City combined. State plows had moved enough snow to fill Gillette Stadium 90 times. And at airports, more headaches with 1.3 million passengers affected in the three storms slamming the Northeast over two weeks, grounding thousands of flights and costing the airlines $60 million and counting. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, New York. Today marks a tragic day in Las Cruces history. On February 10, 1990, two gunmen entered the Las Cruces bowling alley and killed seven people, including three children. According to police, the two gunmen shot the seven execution style and then stole thousands of dollars from a business safe. 25 years later, the case remains unsolved. The Las Cruces Police Department believes, believes that someone out there is holding back information that could help solve this case. It posted the statement earlier this morning saying it's about time for that person to let go of the apprehension, guilt, personal feelings, grudge, shame, or whatever it is that's keeping them silent. 
It's time to do what's right for the victims of the massacre, their families, and all of Las Cruces. Police are asking anyone with information to call Las Cruces Crime Stoppers. The number is 800 222 8477. And remember, you can remain anonymous. The man convicted of manslaughter for causing a crash that killed a state trooper now knows his punishment. Edgardo Flores was sentenced to three years probation for that 2012 wreck that killed state trooper Javier Arana. It does include some jail time, but only on nights and weekends for six months. The prosecution said Flores ran a red light, hitting the trooper's car. However, witnesses in the trial testified it was Arana who ran the red light. Despite being convicted of manslaughter, a jury did find Flores not guilty of aggravated assault. An Anthony teenager accused of sexually assaulting two young girls is behind bars this morning. Authorities say Sunday morning, 19-year-old Carlos Ivan Flores broke into a home by opening an unlocked window. He allegedly threatened the girls with a knife and began to touch them. The girls were able to run out of the room and into their mother's bedroom, who called police. Flores ran off but was arrested a short while later. Fire investigators are still trying to figure out what caused a house in northeast El Paso to go up in flames. It happened around 2 o'clock on the 8800 block of Mount Elbert. The house is vacant and we're told this is the second time it has caught fire in the last two years. No one was hurt. Damage is estimated at $80,000. Authorities need your help this morning finding a missing woman. 59-year-old Cecilia Magdaleno, Magdaleno has been missing since December 17th of last year. She was last seen on the 12,700 block of Montana in Far East El Paso. She's known to frequent truck stops in Central El Paso and Horizon City. If you've seen her, you're asked to call the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. A city project months now in the making is only days away from its grand opening now. And this weekend, El Pasoans will get a first look at the brand new digital wall. It's a 95-inch screen in downtown meant to shape our city's unique history. Good morning, El Paso's Denise Olivas has more on Digi. Good morning, Denise. Good morning. It already has its own name. This weekend, the community gets to display videos, pictures, and memories that best represent the Sun City, and we get to share that with the entire world. And that's because Digi is connected to other digital walls in other countries. El Paso is the first city in the U.S. to get this interactive wall, and this is video of crews working on the final touches last week in preparation for this weekend's grand opening. The El Paso Museum of History has worked alongside a New Zealand company to put the LED screen outside the museum in downtown. In the meantime, the museum has been going through thousands of images that have already been submitted. And it puts El Paso on the map in a way that we weren't before. You, now when you Google El Paso, all the images that are being loaded there are actually um, coming forward. And so it's really wonderful to see that we're really expanding our footprint in terms of our, is our history and our images to the world. And that grand opening ceremony is happening this Saturday on Valentine's Day at the El Paso Museum of Art, beginning at 11 a.m. until 8 p.m. And it's an all-day event for everyone, and it'll have live music and uh, plenty to do. And, of course, with the, those thousands of pictures being submitted, I'm sure that it'll, there will be plenty to see out on the digital wall this weekend. Hillary, back to you. That is pretty exciting. Thanks so much, Denise. Let's take a live look at traffic right now. At 6.08, this is I-10 and Missouri. Nice-looking traffic movement there. I-10 and Piedras looking good as well. East and westbound moving smoothly. Are there any buried treasures left behind at a Socorro mission site? El Paso County Commissioners are moving forward with a plan to dig for artifacts. The details later in the show. And the company is asking those of you with smart TVs not to discuss sensitive information around it. What is causing these security concerns? But first, meteorologist Crystal Cly is live in Santa Teresa with our forecast. Crystal. Good morning, everyone. You might be wondering what this thing is. We're going to be talking about it right after your break. Thanks so much, Crystal. This is ABC7, where news comes first.